Hi, I'm Paul DeBartolomeo. Welcome to Training Minutes. In today's segment, we're going to discuss the components of a high-pressure airbag system. We're going to demonstrate how to properly put the system in service, how to properly set the pressure, and how to test the system prior to use. The foundation of any airbag system is the air source itself. Commonly, firefighters use an SCBA cylinder. Other alternatives is the air brake system off of an apparatus, an air cart, a foot pump, or we could even get air out of a rig tire using a tire chock adapter. Our regulator consists of a high pressure inlet, a high pressure gauge, a low pressure gauge, the pressure regulator knob, the inline shutoff in the low pressure outlet valve. Our hoses are reinforced rubber, 3 8 inch diameter, high pressure hoses. They operate at 300 PSI. They come in various colors and lengths. The couplings are snap lock with a twist safety, with a 4 to 1 safety rating. Our controller consists of the inlet valve, the activation buttons. It's a dual dead man controller. The green up buttons supply air to the bag, while the red down buttons deflate the bag. Each, each independent size has its own gauge. This controller has built-in pressure relief valves. If the pressure in the bag reaches greater than 118 PSI, the relief valve automatically kicks in to prevent an overinflation of the bag. The outlet ports is where our supply hoses go into the controller and run to the bags. Our airbags are constructed of reinforced neoprene rubber with Kevlar reinforced thread. They have a non-slip surface and are all marked on both sides with a large X. The X helps in centering the bags one on top of the other when we stack bags. It also helps us to center the bag under a load. We want to always lift off the center of the bag. The bags come in sizes that range from 1.2 tons to 70 tons and are capable of lifting a load from 3 to 20 inches. Some, co some commonly used adapters in airbag systems are the inline shutoff valve. This is simply a device that allows us to shut the air source off from the bag so that we could remove a hose if we needed that hose to fill another bag. It will allow the bag that we're using to stay inflated. Another common adapter is the Y. When we apply this Y to the controller, we can run two separate hoses off the same outlet. This allows us to do a nice, even, balanced lift. Applying two Ys to a controller allows us to fill four bags simultaneously. Now we're going to demonstrate how to properly set up the airbag system. The first thing you want to ensure is that the shutoff on the regulator is in the off position prior to supplying the regulator with air. Hooking the regulator to the cylinder is very similar to changing out a cylinder on an SCBA. Simply thread the high pressure coupling onto the cylinder. When supplying the regulator with air, do so slowly as to not blow out the diaphragm inside the regulator. As the system airs up, you'll see the high pressure gauge start to rise. It should read the same as the gauge on the cylinder. If these gauges fall below 200 PSI, it's time to change out the cylinder. Next, we want to set the regulator pressure to 135 PSI. We do that by turning the controlling knob clockwise. As we turn, we see the arrow on the low pressure dial start to come up. Many times what we do is we'll put a white or red mark right on the dial itself at 135 to ensure that we have the right pressure. Our next step would be to connect the supply hose from the cylinder to the controller. When connecting these hoses, you want to hear the coupling snap and you want to screw down the safety collar. At this point, we would turn the inline valve on the regulator itself to the open position. This supplies the controller with air. A simple test to ensure that we have air would be to depress both the activation buttons. When we do that, we see the gauge dial up, and we can relieve the air by pressing the down button. Now we want to move on to supplying our bags. Again, we take our supply hose 
into one of the outlets, listen for the click, screw the collar up. We take the female end and apply it to the airbag inlet nipple. Again, we want to hear the snap and we want to screw down the safety collar. At this point, our system is set up and ready for service. What we want to do now is test to make sure that everything's working properly. When testing the system, we really don't need to inflate the bags more than 30 PSI. What we're simply looking to do is listen for any leaks or find any defects within the entire system. So we simply depress the up button and we see the bag start to inflate. We know the system is working properly, the controller is supplying air and the hoses are getting air to the bag. At this point we want to listen for any air leaks or any other problems that may arise. If we did detect a leak, we could take a spray bottle of a soapy solution, spray it in the area where we thought the leak was in order to determine what the problem was. Once we're done with this, we simply deflate the bag, we know the system is working properly, we're ready for service. In any fire department operation, having predetermined riding assignments and pre-rigged equipment allows for a quick and efficient operation. Many companies have designated assignments for airbag operations. In my company, the outside vent firefighter is assigned the control operator position. This assignment tasks him with transporting the equipment to the scene, setting the system up, and operating the controller. As you can see, our airbag system is pre-rigged. We've converted an old SCBA and have the regulator already attached. We have a large satchel which contains our controller, our hoses, and our most widely used fittings. And our most commonly used airbags, the 20-ton airbag and the 15-ton airbag, have been supplied with carrying straps, so basically this system can be transported to the scene by one firefighter. I'm Paul DiBartolomeo. Thank you for watching Training Minutes.